All right, hi Team Builder, welcome to day three of Challenge Week. Uh, I'm Dr. Chris Cavert. This challenge you might have seen before, you might have done it before, but stick around. I've got a couple of thoughts about how we, if we have information, we already know how to do it. It's a little bit redundant. It's not very interesting anymore. How do we think about that differently? So consider that, consider that as we move on to how we learn, how we think about learning, right? We talked about that in the last couple of challenges. This one's called six count. You might've heard this before, six count. And it also can be done in groups. But the idea with our challenge is how are we learning? How are we practice and perf practicing and perfecting so that we can teach others? How do we use it to teach others? So remember, this is about how we use information, how we practice, how we perfect the idea or be able to get enough information so that we can then share it, the skills and abilities with others and help them learn the same things. So let's get to six count. So for six count, the way I like to teach it is to scaffold it. In educational terms, we're gonna be scaffolding the exercise with st starting where uh, people know information, they have a good grasp and they're confident of certain information, and then you add a little bit to it. You add the new things to it as you go to make it a little more challenging or a little more relevant to the skills and abilities that they're learning. So we start six count by just counting to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Most people can do that. I often also invite people to use any language that they would like just counting from one to six. If you go past six, it's gonna be a mistake. People are gonna hear that. They're gonna recognize you made a mistake, but that's okay. We're gonna learn, we're gonna remember for next time. We're learning as we're going. Then now that we have six, we're gonna take one of our arms and we're gonna, we're gonna assign a task to one of our arms and we're gonna to count to six as well and then move one of our arms. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now I'm gonna take one more step back just in case I'm out of the film. All right, we're gonna try that one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice, we put two skills together. Now we're gonna practice a different skill with the other arm. It's gonna go up on one to the side on two and down on three, up to the side and down. Here it goes like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Practice the first arm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Practice the second arm. One, two, three, four, five, six. As we scaffold all these things together, then the idea is we want to bring all those skills and abilities together into the final product that we need to have or produce or do the task. We need to put all those small learnings together. Let me take one more step back, just so we can get everything in. All right, you ready? I'm gonna go nice and slow. We're gonna put all the skills together into one final product. And one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, how did you do? I'm gonna try it again real slow. Here we go, and one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six count. You can use six count in a lot of different ways. Let me come up in front of the camera. I like, you can definitely use a six count for uh, making mistakes, sticking to something. Yes, it's gonna be difficult in the beginning. How do you get better? How do you get faster? If you're working with a group that wants to be more um, efficient at a process, this is a nice lesson of what kinds of things do you do for yourself and others that help them learn and grow in that skill, get faster, better, uh, develop more product in the end, get product to market faster, uh, doing homework as a student in, in school. How do we get a, a, how do we practice a system of doing homework, getting things done so we can do other things or be successful at certain things we need to be successful at? Six counts a great way to do that. So consider, six count as a way to uh, practice something and get proficient at it, right? Practice and proficiency. 
those the, the idea of getting better if you want to. You choose to be better at something if you continue to do it. Another way to do six count is to put groups of people together and do synchronized six count. The idea is they come up with a strategy or a system to do the six count in a way that satisfies all the parameters. The arms are going up in, in certain specific ways and you're counting to six in any language that you want, right? Uh, it, it's often a very creative process or exercise for groups. And I told you to stick around for just a couple of ideas. If you've done this before and it's boring and you don't think it's very interesting anymore, how about changing things? What if you're working on change? What if there's something you need to do to work through the idea or thinking about change? How about learn another language and count to six? How about we change the language to the alphabet? How about instead of one to six, you count by fives? Now what's happening is your brain is having to change. You have the skills and abilities, but your brain is having to change something about it to make it better or different. So consider how you would change six count to maybe make it more interesting and exciting to you or more interesting and exciting to your groups. All right, that was challenge number three. We'll see you tomorrow in challenge number four.